Hi YouTube. I just wanted to have a quick discussion. Um, I did a similar discussion over a year ago. Um, I know that my view has not changed. I, I didn't rewatch the video. I'll, I'll link it in the description box if you want to take a second look at it, I guess. Um, but again, my view has stayed consistent, but this keeps coming up and it kills me. Okay, I just read yet another comment in on one of uh, Freedom Force's videos. A guy that uh, actually bought silver lower <laughs> Sold it higher and still lost money. Okay, I. It was a face palm moment for me. You know, he sold silver when silver was twenty three dollars an ounce, and he and he got twenty dollars for it. And I, I just shook my head and I said, "Why? There's so many ways to sell silver today. Why would you give it away for such a low premium to spot?" I mean, my God, if he just came to YouTube, you know, a lot of us would have bought that from him for uh, <laughs> spot price. So I, I don't understand. I want to do a video on this. Okay, before I get started, I got an email from one of my subs. He says he's one of my subs, um, but he changed his name. So there's a little bit of intrigue there. But anyway, he created a really cool display case for the Zombucks rounds, okay? And he understands. He's, he told me in his email, he said, look, I get it. This isn't for hardcore silver and gold stacker. I know that. This is for a zombie collector. This is for a zombie freak that just loves this series. And so he, he handcrafted a display case that came out looking pretty cool. Okay, so I told him I'd give it a shout out. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to link his promotional video that he put together in the description box. And uh, he's selling these on eBay. So if this is something that interests you, it's a, it's a, cool, um, it's a cool display case with some LED lighting and, and zombie images in the background. And, and uh, comes with air tights that you can plug your rounds into. So if that interests you, check out his video. Look, anybody that's been doing this for a while is going to get nothing out of this video. I get it. Okay, but every now and then you want to do something uh, for people that are new to silver and gold and have questions. Okay, and I'm pounding the table on this one. Before you start buying silver and gold, you have to have an idea in your head about how you're going to sell it. Okay, this has to, this has to register with you. You have to understand that this is not a mouse click investment. Okay, this is not a Scott trade, you know, click, I bought, click, I sold, good, I'm done. Okay, this is basically something that you're going to have to put some work into. And you can get as much out of it as, uh, as you're willing to put into it, basically. Okay, there's two C words that will cost you money every time, and it's not what you're thinking. It's collector and convenience. Okay, if you want to call yourself a collector, that's fine. You know, there, there's a series I'm collecting um, that I'm paying secondary market prices for, okay? Uh, it's the one-tenth ounce uh, Lunar Gold series. You know, I, I never really collected anything uh, as far as silver and gold went. I was just buying what made sense to me each individual time. But there, I was like, you know what, there's one series I'd like to collect. This is it. But some of the older coins are expensive, okay? And I recognize that... I will not be getting a return on investment on that series. Gold would have to make an astronomical move for me to probably see any return on investment on that. Okay, I recognize that. That's being a collector. You want you want to go uh, fix up a car? You want to go buy a car and put put your heart and soul into it and uh, tens of thousands of dollars? You're probably not going to get that back out when you sell it. Have you ever watched Pawn Stars? I, I get it, scripted reality show, all that all that nonsense. But every single time, <laughs> they're like, dude, you're not getting 100 grand out of this car. I know you put that into it. looks great. I'll give you 25. Okay? You're not going to get out of it what you put into it when you're a collector. Unless uh, the metals make a huge move. Okay? You can't count on that, though. Convenience. Oh, that'll cost you. That'll cost you every time. Um, I have New England Patriots season tickets I split with a buddy. They were obviously just in the playoffs. They won the Super Bowl. But I had playoff tickets for the divisional round and the, uh, the AFC championship. And you know what? Out of convenience, I could have called up a broker and said, hey, um, what will you give me for these? You know, the AFC championship, I think face value was 99 bucks. They probably would have given, given me face value, maybe a buck and a quarter a piece. But out of convenience, it would have been really easy to dump them for that. I didn't do that. I went on eBay. I took the picture. I hit upload. I sold them on eBay for a huge profit. Okay, 
I'm not willing to give things away like that. I'm going to get the top of the market that I can get. And if you're going to go and buy Perth Mint bullion and then sell them to a local coin shop, you're killing yourself. Because they're only going to give you a spot or maybe even below. We have a place around here. Does that mean that that's all it's worth? No. No, you're crazy to do that. We have a place around here that'll buy your house. Yeah, they, they buy distressed homes, you know, uh, behind on tax payments. Uh, you just want to sell really quick. They'll give you pennies on the dollar. You know, I could probably get about 170 if I sold my home. They'd probably give me one and a quarter. But it'd be quick. It'd be convenient, right? Why would I do that? Why not try to wait for the right buyer? To sell my house to the right person and maximize the profit. Well, now you're talking about thousands of dollars. I understand. Look at it on a smaller level. I had a sub. Leave a comment on my channel. And, and, you know, I was actually thinking about changing my channel name to your LCS will only give you spot because I, I hear it all the time. I understand. And that's why my LCS will never, ever, ever see any premium bullion from me. If I want to dump something at my LCS, this is what I'm going to be dumping. 90% coins because that's the smallest spread. They'll, they'll give me fairly close to spot on that. I would never buy something for a much higher price, a premium coin, and then just dump it for spot. It doesn't make sense. If that's what you plan on doing, then stay away from Perth Mint Bullion. It doesn't make sense for you. If you want to sell out of convenience and throw money away, then by all means, go down to your local coin shop, dump everything on his desk, and take whatever he gives you. But you know what? You're probably going to lose money unless the metal makes a huge move. You know, in that case, if the metal does make a huge move, then you're right. You, you might not mind doing that. Okay, but if, if metals are flat to down and you can still make a profit when you buy the right coins, when you buy the right rounds, I would strongly suggest go to alternate methods. Uh, eBay is a great way to sell. I, I get it. You have to pay a lot of fees. Um, you have to basically um, make sure that there's not a chargeback as uh, eBay is pretty tough on sellers. I get that. I've been selling on eBay for coming up on 20 years. Okay, So I fully understand. It's like 16 or 17 years, something like that. I fully understand selling on eBay. I've done it for years and years. Okay, and it doesn't intimidate me. But for some of you, it's not the right way of doing it, so stay away. Peer-to-peer -peer is another way to sell. And I think this person that sold everything at, when silver was at 23 and he sold it at 20, if he came on YouTube, he could have sold it very easily for spot or a buck above spot. There would have been somebody that would have bought it from him. So I think he was nuts to uh, just basically give it away like that. However, he did. But peer-to-peer -peer comes with its own set of risks. Okay, um, There was a scenario... Uh, a while back and um, what ended up happening was a YouTuber that unfortunately many of you have probably seen his video because he has a video that a lot of you watched okay I can't say his name because I don't I can't verify it so I, I basically you know can't come out with it but he screwed somebody out of an ounce of gold okay he uh, he proposed a trade that sounded a little too good to be true the guy sent the gold for the silver and never got the silver Okay, you would have thought after watching this video that this guy had so much money there's no way he would have screwed me, and yet he did. Okay, and worse yet, this video with all the silver, I also heard another rumor that he ended up returning it all anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, look, understand uh, the, the analogy I used for somebody was we're all kind of happily playing on the playground and there's a lot of people in trench coats kind of circling the playground. You have to understand that there are people out there that want to separate you from your money. Okay, It doesn't matter whether it's a dollar, whether it's a mercury dime, or whether it's an ounce of gold. There's always somebody out there that will look to separate you from your money. You have to be very careful if you're going to sell peer-to-peer. -peer. And you know what? A lot of efforts have been made to streamline that process. You know, I remember uh, Mr. Vegeta at one point was uh, putting together a trusted, uh, trusted trade partner list uh, that really didn't go anywhere. You know, BSO was trying to do Stackerville. Um, unfortunately, that really didn't go anywhere. 
So it's something that's very difficult to do, okay? And, you know, it, it, there's always a risk. Um, and yes, you know, if I were to buy or sell from somebody on YouTube, there is a very small group of people that I would do it with, unfortunately. You know, I mean, you have to really uh, spend some time with these people and, and get to know them a little better before you're willing to kind of put yourself out there. You can also think about um, selling back to uh, at Mexico Provident. Okay, uh, that usually works better in a scenario where you bought in large size. Okay, Raw Dog comes to mind, right? He buys monster boxes. He waits for the Atmex buy price or the Provident buy price to exceed his buy price, and then he'll just ship it right back to them. Never, I don't think he even opens the boxes or tubes. That's a whole different ball game. You know, that's obviously not me. I don't buy by the monster box. Um, it is a way to do it. I'm not sure that that is the best way. But in all fairness, that's a lot of metal to move, you know? I mean, that's a lot of time. I'm talking, you know, about selling a roll or two. You know, he's talking about selling a whole monster box. That's, that's a whole different ballgame. Um, what I would personally do is if I were selling to a coin shop, I would make sure that I was a familiar face in that coin shop. I would establish a relationship with a local coin shop owner. I would find out, I would talk to him all the time about what his buyback prices are and find out what the smallest spread is. Find out what his price is on 90% silver. Find out what his uh, buyback prices are on American Gold Eagles. Find out what his buy prices are on Silver Eagles. What about other world uh, government bullion, uh, Maple Leafs, Philharmonics? Find out. Are they priced similar to an Eagle? Probably not. What about generics? What about bars? And then once you have their, and ask them if they're consistent with these buyback prices. And then uh, after that, when you start buying, you know, if you're looking online, maybe there's something that you can uh, buy that's actually very close to what they would give you. You know, uh, I mean, these gold eagles are a great example. Getting those for below spot, I could have wheeled around and went right down to the coin shop and basically, you know, broke even on them right away or even made a little bit of money on them right away. Um, same thing with, if you remember, when uh, Atmex was selling that Pamp Suisse uh, one ounce bar. And I got it for $136 or something like that for below spot. I could have literally got it in the mail and ran right down to my coin shop and sold it right then and there for a profit. Um, that's a different scenario. But if that's the way you want to sell, you got to find out what their spread is. Okay? If you're going to sell peer to peer, be careful. Be careful. Watch your back. Okay? Come up with a, a list of people that you think that you can trust. And even then, be careful. Like I said, this guy, <laughs> I mean, a lot of you knew him. That's the shame of it. And he screwed somebody out of an ounce of gold. Okay, unfortunately, you know, it, it went across the border, and then what do you do? So, all right, so before you buy silver and gold... Make sure you know how you're going to sell it. Sorry if this went a little long-winded. It's just something that um, it just keeps coming up and it's very frustrating to me. It's frustrating to see people basically leaving money on the table to forego profits for the sake of convenience.